Everybody, oh. microphone on, microphone including yours, Debbie. Oh. And Donna. Okay, we're going out in the mall at 6.01. Debbie's in the but Donna's in the All right. Approval of the minutes from June 2017. Mr. Chair, I have a slight amendment. Um, and this is my fault. When I originally uh, wrote my report to be included in, um, I had put July 16th. In fact, it's July 17th for the council consideration of the park's dedicated fee. Any other corrections? <coughs> so, so I'll move that we approve the event minutes. As amended. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oh. Yeah, I, I seconded it. Good. That works. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Minutes are approved. And I see we have no interested citizens today. They're all in our beautiful parks. I was say yeah. So yeah. We might get out of here at 15 after today. Huh. Huh. Quiet. 15, 15 <laughs> oh after God, seven. Jim, Ooh, speak for yourself. Not the pot or the kettle. I don't even know. <laughs> we're not uh -oh. going to get out of here early if oh. we're all. Wow, wow. <laughs> New old business. Okay, we were just talking about the heel grant. Yeah, and after some uh, complications with getting that figured out, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to make a motion to withdraw the Parks Board request to Council to apply for the HEAL grant for this year. Second. Any discussion? So uh, just a little bit in terms of uh, Debbie put a lot of work into helping identify it, and Dylan and I passed some notes back and forth, and what it boils down to is I think we're going to have a pretty strong foot for next year. Um, it just caught us a little bit by surprise. We we're under a pretty big time crunch, uh, even from when we first identified the grant being open. And so I think we're a little more prepared for uh, this time next year to be able to do the grant, and we should be able to be successful. And I'll add to that that uh, after looking into it a little further, there is, for the benefit of the board, a 50% match that, that we yeah. did not bring up before. Well, and I, and I think so. It was the 50% match was one big identifier. We also have to have letters from folks in the community um, of support. Um, th there's a few things. There's actually policy rules that we have to fit in order to apply for the grant. We identified the policy. We began identifying some of the folks in the community we can get letters from. Uh, just the time constraints with the holiday being when it was, it was just a little more challenging than I thought, I think we initially <coughs> anticipated. And so, um, you know, not having the matching funds was a really big deal. Uh, very limited opportunity for SECs, but it would still leave us with a lot of money we'd have to come up with, so. Did we get that second? Uh, yeah, Matt seconded it. Okay, any other discussion? We have a motion to recommend that we delay applying the grant for the HEAL grant until next year. Uh, sir, it was actually not delay, but uh, withdraw. Withdraw right. until next year. Thank you, Debbie. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. Naming the volleyball courts. Glenn, did you have something? Yes. Um, so you'd like to make a motion that? Well, let me read. I talked to Hans. He was here earlier, but I think he had to leave. Yeah, he just uh, walked out of his eyes grabbing up. Here's how he would like to have Son. Hans and Vicki Schneider Fannin, Fan Volleyball Courts. And then he'd like to have, he's got volunteers, but I really think it should be sponsors, but either way, volunteers and contributors, Kurt Morrison, Jerry Nutbrock, Ricardo, how do you pronounce that again? One more time. I'm going to take a shot in the dark on this and Becerril, B-E-C-E-R-R-I-L-L. -L. -L. Okay. And Randy Miller. So is that your motion, Clint? Did you that make is a my motion. Okay. Is there a second to that Sorry. motion? Second. Motion is uh, made and seconded. Sorry, I'm a little crazy today. 
Is there any discussion? The chair recognizes himself. Uh, <laughs> I can do that. If you have a mirror. Yeah. Anyway, Mr. Walls uh, reminded uh, me today that when we originally, uh, the sand courts were originally replaced, we made agreement that we'd leave the sign about his eagle, son's eagle uh, project of doing the courts. And he'd like something, either that sign left off or something added to that sign, like originally uh, constructed by. And as uh, in Troop 121, as an Eagle project. Yes, Clint. I don't think Hans would be opposed to that, and I can ask you. Did you talk to him out there about No, that? I got here a little late today. Okay. Let me ask about that, and if he wants that added, does anybody have any objections to that? No. Because I think he would go along with that. Okay. Yeah, Richard it's on said. the sign, I guess. Yeah, yeah, with Troop 121. It wasn't Michael, was it? Yeah, it was Michael. Yeah, it was Michael Walsh. Okay. Whatever one broke his ankle, that one. That's Michael. Okay. So, Mr. Chair, is this like a, a sign similar to what they put at the big toy where it's you know, it's not like this big bronze thing or anything, but it's... No, if you look on the fence, the sign is still there. Okay, okay. I mean, if it's consistent with, um, you know, the the practices in the in the park stuff, I think that's a great idea. You know, are we talking more like the one that's the amphitheater, that type of sign? You tell me. What would you I, I, to have there? One like the big toy or one like the amphitheater? Is the big toy on a fence? No, it's on a big on kiosk. Big toy's on the kiosk, yeah. so that's probably not going to be real appropriate for the... Well, let me qualify my statement by saying, where is the sign going to be put in relationship to the volleyball courts? Does anybody know a location? S so originally when Hans and I were talking about it, we had talked about potentially doing it, like having something on the, the uprights in the shelter, like a little plaque of some sort, if that would work. If that doesn't work, then I, I don't really know. It sounds like it's growing a little bit more than what originally was talked about. But Another thing that might be okay is to put it right next to uh, the Charts House sign. Put two of them together. I think right on the walkway. I, I think that I would withhold a recommendation of the type of sign until I know the location for sure because if it's a freestanding sign separate from anything else or standalone sign, then it's going to be, my recommendation is going to be different than if it's mounted to a post on the structure. Right. Okay. And so if, if the goal is to put it on the structure, then that's a different dynamic in my mind than a freestanding sign on a post. And if we're going to do that, I would recommend something constructed much like the charge sign, mm -hmm. something durable. Okay, where if it's on a post on the on the on the structure somewhere, it could be a sheet aluminum printed type of sign. Right. Potentially, uh, just depends on. And I don't know what size we're talking about either. How big does this sign are, are we envisioning? Does anybody have a size in mind? Okay. Let me find that out first. Okay. And, th and I, I'm thinking this may actually s serve dual purpose, especially if. There's following up from the discussion we had, yeah. So not to be. There, there's some discussions about possibly um, some some court ethic uh, type thought process going on. Hans is thinking about that and how that might work in terms of, users yeah, users and you know just just general you know um, good manners, good manners and you know clean up after yourself type thing. Just so that might you know if you can cohabitate that that would be a good use of space versus um, the other thing that occurs to me and forgive me uh, this is obviously I haven't been involved in this discussion before but is there any thought or idea to name the shelter separate from the courts that was not brought up but that's a possibility and if that is the case then obviously the sign for the courts we wouldn't want to put that on the shelter right just just a question well Good question because we hadn't thought of that because the shelter isn't there yet. 
Exactly. Yeah. And maybe the, maybe the other consideration here is to consider the shelter and the courts a facility, and the facility is named, for instance. That's another good point. Thank you, Bill. Just so, should we delay this until we get some more ideas on? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. So, what is that? So, uh, I'll come in and with him and we'll set the clock going. Okay. We'll get Robert involved with this too, but just, I mean, right. we want to do this right, obviously. And so, let's think about it and let's get it right. And in honor of Hans and his family and everybody to recognize what he did and what they've done. So, yeah. So do you withdraw the motion then, or? I think so, yes. You want to withdraw your motion, Clint? Yes. Okay, then. We have to vote on it? No, I think we just. Nah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pass. Yes, the second you guys did it. Oh, who seconded that? Jim. Jim, do you re have the I agree? Okay. All right. Now. I, I will. Well, never mind. As I was. Go ahead. So I just want to reiterate to folks that if, if you're interested in the sand volleyball courts, this is a huge thing, and I think it offers a lot of opportunities. So if you want to support it, go to the Kaiser Parks Foundation page. There is an opportunity to donate to that uh, structure. Um, the, there's a there's a goal of three to six thousand dollars that Hans would like to raise, um, and so if you're looking for an opportunity to, to donate, that's a really really great opportunity to do so. And what is the website? Tony, you want to help me? Kaiser That's Park what Foundation. I was going to correct. It's not the Kaiser Parks Foundation website. It's Kaiser Rapid Park website. Oh, okay. Sorry. Each one of the parks now has their own website oh, wow. and their own foundation donation button. But they start out as the Kaiser Parks Foundation and then move through. They could or they could just go directly to it. Okay, so it's Kaiser Rapid Park. Period. Through the city website? Mm -mm. Uh -uh. It's through the Parks Foundation. Okay. KaiserRapidParks.com. I'm looking it up right now for you, Debbie. Okay. I believe it is. I, but if you put it in Kaiser Rapids Park, you're going to get it. Um, so this actually still shows KaiserParksFoundation.org, and then it says slash Kaiser-Rapids-Park.html. If you just put it in Kaiser Rapids Park, you'll go directly to it. No, that's what shows up when you put Really? It in. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so they've changed that again. Thank yeah. you. So when you get there... Um, confusing. There's but a donate, and then there's a help build a shelter, uh, picnic shelter button as well. But you need to, you, yeah, you need to be sure that you're on the right site because each park has a button that looks exactly similar. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Bill, I have a question for you. So. Lars isn't going to make it his deadline, but that's money just going to roll over till next year. Yes. So budget there's no adjustment. problem with that. Budget? No, there's not. It's it takes a budget adjustment at the council level, but it's budget neutral, so it's just transferring from one fiscal year to the next. Okay, I heard some discussion about that. Thank you for clearing that up. Yeah, it's it's because it's budget budget neutral. It's just no paperwork it, it's it's a little more than paperwork because we don't have the authority to spend that money in this fiscal year oh so the council so, has to so the council authority. has to approve it yes so okay so it's a little more than paperwork but it's 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 no it's a non-issue item is what i'm trying to get to because it's budget neutral so thank you bill yep <coughs> solar eclipse event report that would be you donna oh I don't have anything especially new and different than we've talked about before. We are still getting reservations. In fact, we have a, uh, at this, as of yesterday, we had $10,000 in there for reservations. Um, we are getting all of the things in line and ready to go. Uh, Clint has all of his concerts ready, lined up. Uh, porta potties are lined up. Uh, he and Mav and who else is working on trash removal. Um, I'm heading up the registry desk. Uh, we're going to have a mis uh, merchandising desk. And we're going to sell t-shirts and cups and uh, glasses. glasses and um, whatever else we can come up with between now and then. 
Um, I'm collecting stuff for the swag bags, which uh, is something that we're going to give to each one of the reservation people, not each individual person, but the reservation itself. And in there, they'll have things like brochures that say kinds of points of interest. We're looking for coupons for businesses. Um, Kaiser Times is going to put a bunch of, a big city map inside their Kaiser Times and then they're going to provide us with copies of that to put in bags. So they'll have a, a way to get around the city and find the different businesses and et cetera. Wow. So we're getting a lot of things put together. Anything else you can think about the highlights? We actually have, I think, all of the insurance and liability and permits correctly assigned now. That was a little bit of confusion. We got that straightened out. I think we, I think things are rolling along fairly smoothly. Don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So yes, Mr. Taylor. I hope Clint doesn't mind. You're on the foundation, right? Mm -hmm. He's put out an awful lot of money for this. I know. Is there any way the foundation could pay? some of the entertainment stuff. I mean, he's... I can't make that decision. I, I, well, I know you can't, but could you discuss it with Of foundation? course. We, it's, it's being discussed already. Okay. It has been all along. Yes, Clint. Um, I mentioned who we're going to have there, so I just want to go over that again. Psycho Billy is there Friday night. We're groupies. Okay. So my Brother-in-law. Saturday night, one of the biggest bands in the valley, Ty Curtis, will be there. Uh, it'd be a nightmare probably on traffic that night. Sunday, we have David Klinkenberg, which is a violinist who plays with Pink Martini, does all cruises and all kinds of different things. He's bringing, and I can't tell you the name right now, but he's bringing an American Idol singer oh, that nice. will perform before his show. A winner? American Idol. Winner? Singer. No, oh, oh, I, oh. I guess not Sanjaya. No, ah! I guess par apparently pretty good though. And that will be a paid event on Sunday, okay? And it's fifteen dollars. Um, and then he's going to perform free the next morning uh, when the solar eclipse is going on, and we'll probably have some music that morning. Uh, we're going to be doing breakfast, lunch and dinner. Then we're going to have some pretty good food too. It's, uh, we're going to have slider steaks. Uh, we're going to cook in the, in the morning for breakfast. We'll have cereal, bacon, uh, ham and eggs. We're going to have everything. Bacon. <laughs> um, so one of the other things I thought of while you were talking is that uh, we are definitely looking for people to volunteer. Um, we are in the process of creating a web page, kind of like they did with the big toy, where people could go directly to volunteer. So we'll be uh, talking about that a lot and probably getting that information out in Kaiser Times for people to come and volunteer. I specifically am looking for people to come and help with registration because in my opinion, we should probably be open at least nine in the morning till at least concert time registrations and that's quite a few hours so the more people we get to sign up the shorter time what one person has to spend are you talking saturday or friday friday saturday for registration yeah all three okay friday saturday sunday because people are coming in at different times uh, do you know the percentage of how full it is 60 percent 50 percent i have no idea okay. you know how many campsites we I don't have that count. Marlene has that count. Okay. Well, we've done, let me think back a minute now. I think there are 60 reservations. Some of those are the for RVs and some of those are for tents. But if you break down all of them, there are 74 altogether sites. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll probably be full then. Pretty full, yeah. Yeah. Full enough. I did have somebody call and um, I get emails to the foundation, as Bill probably knows, the Parks Foundation gets all of the city parks emails, well not all of them, but a lot of them. And we keep getting, uh, got a message from somebody the other day wondering if it was okay for them to park on the city streets. And I said, yeah, you need to contact the city on that, I'm not gonna go there, but um, get lots of, lots of information through 
the Eclipse Mail site, the Parks Foundation site. I'm sure they're getting information through the city, uh, people asking about stuff. So it, there's a lot of people out there interested. So you're still getting a lot of requests Oh, now. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Even more so every day. Good. Okay. Is that the end of your report? Donna? Yes, thank you. All right, thank you. So now we're going to regress. We have an interested citizen. We were going very fast today. So, oh, <laughs> would you like to come forward? <laughs> Give us your name and where you live. Make sure your microphone's on. My name is Pat Fisher, and I'm a Kaiser resident at 3435 Willamette Drive, which is uh, two houses south of Wallace House Park. And I'm here today to uh, bring a uh, suggestion uh, for um, removing some small fences that are in the park. And I've passed along there two kind of packets of photos and the um, the first one shows a, uh, a fence, which a uh, chain link fence, which protrudes from the property line fences at a point where a, there's a pedestrian access passage from this, from this park over to Garland Court. And the fact that the pedestrian passage is there is a really nice. I use it a lot. Um, but the, I also go through there by bicycle and that, is a lot more of a problem. Um, the second picture kind of sh shows that not only are these uh, chain link fences protruding, but there's some kind of uh, wing additions at the end of it, which make the passageway very narrow. So it's pretty narrow for a person walking. Um, I really doubt that a person in a motorized wheelchair could even fit through there. So I think that's uh, a rather unfair uh, situation to to anybody that is coming through there in a wheelchair or with say a large stroller or children in a wagon that sort of thing and it's also makes going through there by bicycle pretty difficult because you have to come to then the third picture shows that with with my bicycle and the handlebars almost touching i mean it's uh seems to me a recipe for uh pending injury at some point some point i'm going to catch that handlebar on the side or or uh uh, scrape my knuckles or something like that. Um, I I sort of imagined that that this was put up there maybe as some kind of a deterrent for motor vehicles uh, going through there, but I I don't think it really um, is adding anything to that to that idea because if somebody wanted to go through there on a motor motorcycle or something they can do it from either end of the park pretty easily and they occasionally do. But if you look at the last two pictures, it kind of shows this um, location as you approach it from the east and on Garland Court. And t to my view, it does not look like a location that anybody would accidentally go through, you know, try to drive through. There's no curb cut there. Um, you have to kind of veer over to uh, a driveway. If you're on, on a bicycle, you have to veer over to a nearby driveway even to get into that that access point. So uh, I would request for safety reasons that that those little chain link fences be removed. And I might add that I think it would make it easier for the people that are mowing the lawn and otherwise uh, taking care of the maintenance in that little section of the park. <coughs> there any comment on that? Be willing to entertain any oh, sorry. question or clarification that, that you might have. So that the, I'm assuming those wings are put in there to stop, like motorcycles and that kind of stuff. Is that what? Be my guess. That's been there. We probably inherited that when that subdivision was built. Be my guess. But 
certainly something we can look at at, at changing um, to still uh, to achieve what Ms. Fisher's wanting and still keep a, a deterrent for motorcycles racing through there. So, and you know, also look at it for ADA access compliance too. Do we yeah, need to make a motion, or are you just going to do that? Do it. Just do it. I like that. Almost bill. done. How's that? It's <laughs> done. I like. No, that. honestly, that's something. I mean, those are the kind of things that, you know, we some of our we see. We've probably seen it for years. It's always been that way. Didn't think about it. She brings it to our attention. We'll take a look at it and see what we can do to make it better. Yeah, it's yeah. probably a county requirement. I wasn't going to throw dirt on the county, but you're probably <laughs> right. <laughs> I will. <laughs> but, I mean, that pathway's been there since that subdivision was built. I bet it was there and before the subdivision. Uh, was maybe, maybe. Um, but it was formalized when that subdivision was built, and I think that was before we were a city. So, you know, the pathway was improved since we were a city because I was involved in, in, in that pathway improvement. Um, but certainly we can take a look at it and make it better. All right. Thank you, Bill. You bet. Okay. Would you like your pictures back? Um, no, okay. I don't need them. If you need, whoever needs copies. Uh, there's one set in color and then two photocopies of it. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Okay. That was probably the easiest way I've ever done that. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I mean, I'll keep hanging on to these. Unless, okay. That was unless fairly painless, it. wasn't it? Hmm? I said that this was fairly painless, wasn't it? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I see the name. I wasn't sure if the name was the same. Okay. Here's a few. Mm -hmm. It's your turn, Bill. Staff report. Okay, staff report. Well, um, hard for you to believe, but parks are really busy right now. They're being oh, well used. Really? Um, Operationally, I really don't have much to report. Robert and I get a, didn't get a chance to connect before he had to take off today. Um, what I do know is things are running along pretty smoothly. We're being able to stay up on mowing and things like that because the weather's cooperating. Splash Fountain's operating pretty darn well <coughs> so far. Um, <laughs> I don't want to jinx anything. Um, it's well used again this year. Um, the parks fee ordinance goes to City Council for consideration on Monday night. I received that for review about 5.30 tonight. Oh. I've sped read it real quick, <laughs> but I, I need to study it and talk with Shannon about it, so I really don't have any details to say on that other than it's at council Monday night, along with the police fee. Um, you talked a little bit about the grant extension, so I wanted to make sure you that was on, everybody was on board with that and that that's going to council Monday night. Um, yeah, that's really the highlights. Things are just busy. And then if there's Matt any has questions. a question for you. Kay. So to clarify, the the discussion for both the parks and police fee on Monday will also have a hearing regarding both of those, correct? So the opportunity for people to comment in person at that council meeting. Public hearing. I don't. I didn't pay attention to the agenda close enough to see if it's under public hearing or administrative action. I believe it's under public hearing. I, th yeah, I, thought I, I think it is. Pretty sure it is. Pretty sure it is, and they're, I believe they're separate public hearings. Yes. I don't think they're together. Okay. So, so either way, there's always opportunity to provide testimony under public testimony, right. but I believe that those are public hearings, yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we did get a, an email from somebody saying that the fountain shut down in the middle of the afternoon or early in the evening and was there a problem with the fountain, the sp splash fountain sometime I, in the last couple of weeks? I honestly don't know oh, if okay. there was a problem um, or if it was a control problem or a timer. I, I'm not sure, Donna. I really don't know. All right. I just, that came to mind. I, sp I passed it on to Robert, but. Okay. Yeah, I hadn't. I haven't heard anything. So if if there was a problem, it's, I would assume it was minor. Um, sometimes the the sensors in that system will shut it down if they're not happy. And what I mean by the <laughs> sensors is 
the sensors that, that, that control the chemicals to keep it oh, you know, disinfected. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if they're not happy, they'll shut it down. And so we've had that issue happen before. It's usually cleaning them off or something fairly simple. Um, but I haven't heard anything, so I'm, I believe it was a simple fix and it was really not a big issue. So. Is there some kind of a, a sign or, or any kind of instructions or information out there that people could look at about stuff like that? I, I actually believe there's a sign out there right now that shows that it's down right now. Okay. Yeah, it should I be know, down. I don't know what all it I says, but I saw that there is a sign. Okay. And I think today's, if I remember right, today's scheduled maintenance day, so it's off today for scheduled maintenance. But if there's problems, there should be a sign out there with a number for <laughs> people to call after hours so we can well, get that's our staff. I, yeah, I, haven't I, been I, out I believe there, so. that's on the sign out there, what number to call, yes. Oh, okay. Because they sent, you know, again, yeah. city email came to the Parks Foundation. <laughs> da, 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 da. So yeah. thank you. The other thing I, I just thought about I wanted to mention is um, the, the projects at Kaiser Rapids Park, the pathways and the surfacing um, are moving forward. We have... Um, selected the colors for the surfacing and that's so they could get that ordered it's going to be delivered the material is going to be delivered here in the next few weeks we're going to store it for um, a couple a month or so until they get in to do the work um, it's going to be a tan and black combination color Robert and I talked a lot about color choice and whether we should do separate colors for oh, take it we're going to do blue and black in the tot lot and then tan and black in the rest of the facility we talked long about that, and one of the things we were really concerned about, there was some really nice colors to pick from, but they got to be a little dark, and we were concerned about heat, um, burning little kids' feet out there running around. So we tried to find the lighter color pattern as we could, and black was one of the must-haves. We could not have it solid tan or solid green or whatever without paying quite a premium for that solid color. Um, there were some real attractive colors also that were more primary, but those were also a premium increase in price. And so we went with what the bid included, and so um, that's been done. Material should be here in the next week or two, I believe. The pathways, contractors, contracts are signed. We're just waiting for him to let us know what their schedule is, um, and they'll get out there and build the pathway. Uh, the tree work is continuing. I, last I talked to Robert, which has been detailed about that probably two weeks ago now um, about halfway through maybe a little over halfway through um, the county coming out and getting that cut up um, I don't know if they've done more since then I haven't asked Robert specifically but that's moving ahead and the intent and goal is to have that done and all the brush pushed into a pile before the or before the eclipse event so so when is the drain field and the bathrooms going to go in next year next, next spring. year yeah Yep, the, that I'm waiting for one little more piece of recording at the county because we did a lot line adjustment out there. I think you folks are aware of that. Um, and get, make sure that's recorded, then we'll go for the permit for the septic field, septic tank and septic field. We have that in hand, then we'll put the bathrooms out for bid and that'll be constructed next spring. What line were you adjusting? The west line. There's a provision in the septic rules that says if your property is within 300 feet of a sewer line, you shall connect, period. doesn't matter where the connection point is if the property is within 300 feet. The west property line of Kaiser Rapids Park is clearly within 300 feet of a sewer line on Tate Avenue. So... It also impacts the ability to repair or fix the existing septic system for the house that we rent. It's all on the same piece of property. So what we decided to do is do a lot line adjustment, create a parcel that includes a big toy of the house and the better part of the orchard um, that makes that west east property line more than 300 feet from a sewer line. So once that gets recorded, and it's in place, and I can go down to the county with the assessor's records accurate, and apply for. I'm going to apply for the septic permit and see what happens. Now the sewer so line run, runs down Schmall and Dead End here too, doesn't it? It stops at 15th. 
Well, what is that? That's a force main. The force main. Salem. That's two force mains that come from West Salem. That's oh. what pump from pump West Salem is. to the treatment plant. Not available. Mm -hmm. The only option to serve the park under the rules that we were faced with was to take it to Tate Avenue, and we'd have to pump it ourselves, a distance of close to 1,200 feet. That would be. It's a maintenance problem. It's a construction expense problem. Um, and it's a temporary problem in a sense, a temporary thing in a sense, much like the septic system would be temporary. And I use the term temporary very loosely. If the sewer line is ever necessary for properties on the north side of Shamala Road, or excuse, yeah, north side, and the sewer line gets extended up Shamala Road, then we have the ability to connect sewer to the gravity sewer to the park. Until then, and that may happen. I mean, there, I'm not discounting that. It may happen in my lifetime. <laughs> well, that, I that, mean, that's honestly. That's beyond 300 feet, though. No, the property would be, it's the oh, property the pro line. It's, right, not the property the, it's not line. the connection okay. point, it's the property. And that's the piece that I didn't understand originally. I thought it was a connection point. It's the property. And so that's where that's at. And that's what delayed the bathrooms. And that's That right there is what delayed the bathrooms. Otherwise, they would probably be being constructed right now. Um, power conduits in, vaults in, that all, all that work's done, waiting for us to get the easement signed with PGE for their conduit going through the orchard before they pull the power line through the conduit. But it's basically ready to go. So how far is the property line from Tate now with the property line adjustment? 340 feet, I think, is what the number is. Fair. So. Good deal. <laughs> Whose idea was that? <laughs> honestly, honestly, I, I'm, I'm thinking through whether it was Nate's idea or Chris's idea. I don't remember. It wasn't my idea initially. Okay, I, I, I found, I went down to apply for the septic permit and found the issue and kind of just took a deep breath and went, oh my goodness, what are we going to do? What are our options? And so I just disc you know, discussed options. Um, oh, and the city engineer came up with the same option, actually. So, um, that's the process. It's a process we took. And it honestly, I'll be real upfront about it with anybody that asked, it felt a little slimy. That's a good term. <laughs> <laughs> it's appropriate. It felt a little <laughs> off to me uh, going into it. But as I thought about it and thought about what makes sense for the community, for the operation, for the use of funds, and for the long term, the septic system made sense. And then when I considered the house that we rent is on the same parcel. And that means we can't ever repair that septic system for that house. We have to hook it to sewer. And that's a long ways away. And a residential type sewer pump system is a maintenance problem. I mean, they, okay. they're, they're just a problem. Rich's house. Yes. Holes. Yes. So when I put all this together, I felt much less slimy and made sure made, it made sense. And I, th I think it was really in the best interest of the park and the community long term. And again, it's temporary in a sense because I truly believe sewer will be extended up Shamara Road at some point. And when that happens, we'll have the ability to hook the park up. We wouldn't have to pump. We wouldn't have to pump. Okay. So certainly be able to get the house to it easily. Um, the bathrooms, I'm trying to set it up to give them, give it the opportunity to, to gravity drain to Shamara Road. So, And, and the, other the other piece is, I was told by Salem, City of Salem, this has been, I don't know, five or six years ago now, that they are, at that time, were looking at doing something to get rid of their force mains and making that a gravity line. Mm -hmm. And if they do that, then there's another opportunity for sewer service in Shamal Road. When, 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 you, when you do the, the, put the sewer system in, are you going to, leave it so there's an opportunity just to plug in and yes so it's all designed to be on the north side of the bathrooms the septic field to be on the north side of the bathrooms which is where the sewer would go to so yeah it'll be it'll be shallow at the bathrooms yeah it's all going to be constructed and designed for easy conversion in the future okay absolutely I have so a, just a question bill sure and i may have missed what you said you were talking about the the mats down for the pathways and the big toy. Mm -hmm. And you said in about a month. The 
the material for the big toy surfacing will be delivered in about a month. Okay, but you're not considering doing a construction. Oh, no, no, oh, okay. no, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. No, the, 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 somebody the, would ask me. the contract for the servicing stipulates they cannot start until after September 11th because we have the group of volunteers coming in on the 9th to take the chips out. In fact, I think we said the 15th, and we gave ourselves a window of time. Weather-wise. Well, not okay. necessarily weather-wise, on the thought that if the, the volunteers outside. don't get all the chips out in one day, we've got to get them out of there. So we gave ourselves some time to finish that. Okay, before the contractor come in and start the servicing project, so that so that. So then the, the next question is, those chips will be out of there during the eclipse weekend. No, they will not. So after the eclipse. After the eclipse okay. weekend, that the chips are scheduled. The, the volunteers are scheduled for September 9th, Saturday, September, September. 9th. Okay. And at that point, on from sat Saturday, September 9th, the big toy will be closed until the servicing is finished, and that probably realistically going to be about mid-October. So it's going to be down about a month and a half. We <coughs> talked about this at length and trying to schedule that work to impact the kids the least. Our feeling was right after school starts um, is probably the best time. Although we really have good weather that time of year, we need the weather to do the surfacing. And so we talked at length about do we try it in the spring? Do we do it in September? And we determined that September was probably the more favorable time to do it. It's going to be closed for the same amount of time. And if we tried springtime, it could be longer. Wet. Exactly. Because if it gets wet, and we all know what springtime around here is like, you can't count on the weather. And it goes um, on and on and, and on. And, you know, we still face weather issues September t as well. But that was what we felt was the best choice. So The contractor, say if you had two or three days of rain, which is a little unusual in September, but a couple days, he can delay and still do it? Yeah, they have to put that down in sections, as I understand it, and I don't, I, I do not know the process. Honestly, I, I've not seen it done, so I don't know how they do it, but I know enough to know they can't put it all down in a day, so they have to have seams or sections that they do and so they'll be able to work their section work around the weather if necessary. Mm -hmm. We've talked to them about that a little bit. So, and again, I don't—I've not seen it put down, so I don't—I don't have firsthand knowledge of it. But I do know enough to know they can't do it all in a day, in one pour, if you will. So they have to be able to section it off and then seam it together, meld, mold it together, whatever process they use to join those sections together. So. Be interested in your and watch it. Yeah, it's—I'll be watching it. I'll, I'm interested to see it. So. The schedule for paving of the path? I don't have a schedule yet. Um, they haven't told us. They have to be done with the path by the 15th of September, I believe. I notice they have some gravel down and some geofabric. Mm, no, well, they, they have don't. something down on No, them. that's nothing to do with the pathways. That is to do with an access easement that exists on that side of the park to a property that is landlocked behind property on 15th Avenue. Oh. oh. I did not know that their easement was there until, I don't know, six months ago now. A um, gentleman came in for a driveway permit. I said, no, you can't have a driveway permit for there. You can't have a driveway off Shamal Road. Oh, yes, I can have an easement. You what? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. And I researched it, and sure enough, there's a 45-foot easement back there that's partially on the park and partially on private property that was granted to Mr. Lydon when he bought that property from the Buckholz. Buckholz granted him an easement. His vision at that time was to build a public street there to serve that parcel's almost two acres, if I remember right. It's big enough for a few lots. Um, the current property owner's just interested in building a house back there. And so he's creating his access. He has to pave it. He's rocking it and going to pave it. Um, and that's going to be right on the property line or over the property line. And then the pathway will be west of that. So he's, with he's within the 25-foot buffer that really wouldn't make any difference. That's, but that's right. He is That easement, it's a 25-foot easement in the park, a 20-foot easement on private property. Coincidentally, that's the buffer. Oh, okay. So it wouldn't affect anything in the future. It doesn't affect anything in the future other than um, it forced 
the path to move a little farther west than I in originally intended, which isn't a bad thing. Um, I was thinking to put the path closer in the 30 foot range off property line, closer to the buffer, and it's probably gonna be more like 40 feet now, which it's, it's no big deal. It just, I'm just glad that I found out about it when I did so we could plan the pathway accordingly. Yeah, if you just start <laughs> the pathway, then found out, <coughs> oh, you have to take that up. I exactly. So, so yeah, as soon as we, as soon as I get a schedule from the paving contractor, um, we'll let everybody know that it, when, when it's going in, so. I, this isn't really important, but I, I'm wondering when we acquired that property, why that didn't come up or show on something. Oh, it's, it was, it was in there. I just didn't know about it. Jim, it was in, it was disclosed there. Shannon knew about it. We knew, the city knew about it. I personally didn't oh, know Oh, I see. It. See, I just, well, I, don't know if I just didn't know about it. it. I wasn't involved in the property acquisition and it was a piece that, the, an area of the park that I never had to look at closely for any development or any reason. And yeah, I just, it caught me by surprise. So. Well, he showed you. He did. <laughs> Shannon said, yeah, it's there, Bill. I'm you didn't know that? Did. Uh, no, I didn't know that, which, you know. Well, unless you like reading deeds, you wouldn't know it. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, unless I'm involved in the acquisition of the property, which I wasn't, then no reason for me to find it until now. <laughs> so. Any other questions okay. for Bill? I wondered why that was so wide through there. Why? That's exactly why. Any other questions for Bill? Thank you, Bill. Very informative. Thank you. You bet. <coughs> Roland, we got. It's your turn. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> no, I, I apologize for being late. I, we, uh, we had a public safety uh, meeting, and uh, Mark Callier would not let me skip out early. But uh, and of course, I've been on vacation for the last uh, three weeks. And uh, last night we had a work session uh, <laughs> uh, with the group that was. Uh, <coughs> presenting the resolution, inclusivity resolution. It was quite interesting. Um, uh, other than that, I don't have too much more, um, but I will say this. Uh, Sunday, Miguel Gomez, who was with us, uh, lived at my home, got his first hit in the majors with the San Francisco Giants. And now there's three players on the giant roster that used to live at my house. It's, and they were all in the same room. It's amazing. But Dan uh, Slania, the pitcher from Notre Dame, uh, Christian Arroyo, the third baseman right now on the roster, that, that's actually starting. And then Miguel, who just moved up uh, Saturday, they moved him up and got his first hit yesterday. It's pretty exciting. So I guess I got to go see the Giants now. Can you give us an Austin? I'm a Dodger fan. Pardon? Can you give us an, give us an Austin report? Did you get an to, Austin report. Did you get uh, to watch way, him play? For those of you guys that have been reading about Austin, Dirks, he was here yesterday. You know, We were out golfing. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, he was here, yeah. It was kind of low-key. You know, we didn't. But uh, we all met at McNary, and it was kind of fun. Um, uh, he's very popular in, in uh, Arlington, where I spent some time. And picture this, I'm in a bar with everybody's with the uh, Rangers stuff, and everybody's going, did you see the, the, the game last night? <laughs> and, I feel, I, and I'm looking at TV, and it's Austin. It's hard to believe. It, it's it's uh, really uh, surreal. But it's, it's, it's a great thing for our community. And, you know, uh, and Austin, and for those who don't know, it's Austin Bibbins Dirks, who grew up in Kaiser and played at McNary. Yeah, Spent and, 12 years in the minor leagues. And I can tell you for a fact, when he was 16 years old, he couldn't break a pane of glass with a baseball. He was yeah. about 135 pounds. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, he worked for me one summer, and the nicest young man you'll ever meet. He is the real deal. And... This year in May, he got called up to the Texas Rangers, and they really say he's kind of the a uh, 32-year-old phenom, and uh, he should be 5 and 0. He's 3 and 0. Uh, Yankees, can you believe that? Yeah, but he did give up. He did give up. Bad pitch wow. gave up a home run to uh, Aaron Judge, but everybody else has too. Uh, <laughs> he, um, but Texas Rangers, I is is have they moved him back? to long relief he's on the regular rotation now well he's it's gonna be hard to trade him i mean you know he's, oh it's, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a it's just a great great for a, that young man that that shows that you know to me it just uh, you know he, he had what we call stick to itness and coach over here would know he never gave up you right know? and, and he, he generally is a really nice guy no, no, he's an awesome kid yeah really good guy so i would like of course to he's married to greg bass's daughter now too so <laughs> My buddy I would like to also mention that that Austin set a 
Texas Rangers rookie record for retiring 19 straight batters right against the Nationals. And yeah, got the win. beat beat so, uh, Serger, who yes. uh, yeah, beat the All Star game tonight. Max Serger. It's just unreal. Yeah. But anyway, that's all I got, and it's been pretty exciting for us baseball people, and we just kind of love what's going on, and and uh, it's good for our community too. So that's why I, I talk about it quite a bit. So thank you very much. So mm. let, since we're on the theme of baseball, I guess there's some uh, Kaiser Little League teams that are headed to Sacramento for regional. Next week. Yeah. Seniors, right? Seniors. Yeah. Seniors, so yeah. Just wanted to mention that, yeah. The one thing they need help is is transportation. Somebody knows a van that they can rent or something that would They're really help them. They're also collecting cans and bottles for. Uh, as a parent who was involved in All Stars, this comes real fast. All of a sudden, you've got to raise money and you've got to do everything. And we we ended up going to the World Series in in Kalamazoo, Michigan, but trying to get the funds together because you don't plan on that. You can't just raise funds in case. And uh, now our girls flew from Seattle to the Bay Area and then flew from the Bay Area to Michigan. But the, the, that, the Michigan part was paid for by the Little League International. But it's very, very difficult because it, it, you don't have a lot of time. So if anybody uh, is interested in donating some, I'm sure that they need it. Okay, we don't have any uh, youth liaison, so we're going to skip that one. I can take it. No, you're not a youth by any stretch of the imagination. But you've Jim. had your turn. Is there <laughs> any other business? <laughs> Hearing none, I'm going to adjourn us at six. No, it's no, not seven. Not a, not a record, though. 651.